You are now tuned in to Not Without Alonzo. We were talking earlier today about the coalition between crack cocaine and crystal meth. Now, I have my own experiences here in the hood when it comes to crack cocaine, but I did not know that it was simultaneously being, there was a, there was a counterpart in the white community. You know, I'm, I never I never met anybody that ever dealt in crystal meth before, but as you were saying earlier, that crystal meth, while they were pushing black folks were being uh, inundated with crack, white folks were being inundated with crystal meth. Yeah. Now, how was that? I mean, well, in the 80s, it was simultaneously. I mean, we, 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 we're going to go deep here. Let's go deep. I mean, like, really gather my thoughts. I thought we are going to stay on music, but... Uh, mm-hmm. Drugs and music. Clark Lady, baby. Hand, hand, baby. They could never get black people... See, white people have always been addicted to alcohols, tobaccos, heroines, speeds, and medication. So getting white people hooked on drugs was no problem. The Woodstock in the 60s and 70s already proved that. So you already had a strong majority of white people already hooked on something. Through, you know, right, exactly. But black people weren't like that. And I hate to put black and white, I'm, but it just it is what it is. So, But anyway, <laughs> but... Uh, they couldn't get black people addicted to heroin. They couldn't get black people addicted. No. You, know? <laughs> you know, they couldn't. They, yeah. they couldn't get people, black people on PCP and LSD and mescalines and stuff like that. There was not that there wasn't prevalent in black communities, but it, there was a lot that came out of black communities because there were certain people that knew how to capitalize on the drug movement, and that's where they were allowed the drugs to be sold is in black communities. But black people as a whole wouldn't get it. So. To sell crystal meth to white people was nothing. All you had to say was crystal meth, and this is a new speed. Okay, let me try it, dude. <laughs> and we do it, you know. But black people wasn't like that. But when you can introduce something you, that, that, you know, at the time they did use cocaine. They used very little because you could freebase cocaine and get and condense uh, cocaine. And, and that's what they sold it, that you're going to get this white man, uh, rich white man right drug, drug right. And, and for half the price and double the high. Right. I got to try it at least once. So once, you, once you do crystal meth or glass or crack, they're all made the same. You have low fat, non fat. There's still milk. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, once you get that bell rung, that's it. And crack, and once crack hit the the, 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 the the black community, and isn't it funny? Isn't it ironic that they found a Rick Ross in every single city at hey, the same, same damn time? time. They just put everything on Rick Ross because he just got too top heavy and just was out there Hollywood out, whatever he was doing. And, you know, they put him as a scapegoat. But they were cooking this shit up in every single major city. Now, why be now? You know, and then they did it with the music. They they pushed the music on us. They pushed the the you know if the lifestyle. There's a documentary, so I'm not I don't have to go into it. It's called King of Rock. And if it wasn't for the crack and uh, the gangsters, hip hop really wouldn't have had the topics that they've had. I mean, if you go back to White Lines and White Horse back in the '80s right. and the Message, yeah. right. and then you go through all the looks, the skis, the rocks, all that had to do with cocaine or selling. I mean, if you go to the Kangos and the Big Chains, that's what the gangsters were wearing in New York. If you go back to to the zoot suits and, 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 and the old man suits or the, the, you know, even the gangster look of L.A. became big through hip-hop. You know, it didn't get big through rock and roll. It didn't get big through R&B. It got big through hip-hop. So hip-hop's metaphor has always been the hustle, the gangbang, and, 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 and that was attributed to what? The crack era. Yeah. Because there was a vacuum after the Black Panthers and all the, you know, Crips were really a, an acronym, community resource improvement project, yeah, something, right? Like, right? right? You know, it was it was a it was a, it was a community Revolution. service, yeah. yeah. You know, right. it wasn't it wasn't this this you know. I mean, they had fight clubs, they had they had car clubs, they had a bunch of social clubs. So you can't consider those gangs. They had Slossons and Pyros. I'm not claiming now. I'm just saying I, by history, they were. They were crews, they were cliques. Boys, hustlers. Right, exactly, exactly. And then, but the crack is what brought that, you know? So you had the black music that was focusing on, I'm jiggy, I'm, I'm gangster, I'm hard, I'm, you know? And then you had the white music that was creepy, that was on, I'm a creep, I'm a loser, I'm insecure, I'm one step close to the edge, I'm about to break, so it's self righteous suicide. So they were pushing this agenda through music. You know what I'm saying? So fast forward to 2000, you know, you think of, you know, all this, you, you look at Katy Perry, you look at Miley Cyrus, you look at Selena Gomez, you look at Justin Timberlake, Justin Timberlake, Justin Bieber. They all have this hard persona. They all have this, like, I'm a part, either I'm a Hollywood party 
kid or I'm or I'm hood. You know what I'm saying? It's really kind of crazy. It's kind of right. it's kind of cool to be hood now. You know, where 20 years ago, you know, I was ridiculed on you know, all three sides. I was ridiculed on my Latin side for being in this black music. I was uh, ridiculed for my white side for being an end lover. And, and I think my cousin called me a wigger. I, I never heard that before. I was like, what the hell? And then I got mad and I said, I'm not a wigger, I'm a wigger. And you're saying it wrong. Not brother, it's brother. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not my sister, it's my sister. So I'm a wigger. <laughs> Motherfucker, and it's not motherfucker either. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're definitely not one of these white guys who act black. That's the but and then I then and then on the black part, and then and I got into hip hop when the Black Power movement was just like rising. You had you had uh, 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 you had yeah Public Enemy and Shock Lee and all that. Then you had uh, X Clan. You had Lakim Shabazz, F Jeff. You had. Kara's one, you had all this like militant shit, and here I come, you know, doing the running man with a high top fade and lines and Tell me you had an African ventures. medallion, please tell me. Oh, I had, oh, but I didn't wear the African medallion, but I wore the conscience belt. I had a pe I had a heart, and then I had, uh, I had hearts. I would have, um, um, oh God, what were my con? I, got, I still have them at home too, hearts, peace signs, and stuff like that. Because if I were you, I'd have flipped them like I'm from South Africa, man. <laughs> right.